Mikhail is known for wrapping herself in a cocoon all game until she finally hits level 16 and blossoms into a beautiful hard carry butterfly. But what if you took Kale out of the solo lanes and shoved her into support? Would you think it's troll? Would your ADC tilt out of control? Whatever your answers are to those two questions, someone's already tested it for us and made it to master while doing so. Kron is our aforementioned Kale support player and self-proclaimed meme lover who's made his way into master on the EU and E server. While he's also played Kale in both mid and top lane, he's recently started picking her up in the support role and with some pretty impressive results. Kron, also known as David, started playing League at the end of Season 5 with his friends. He had heard about League in Seasons 3 and 4 but didn't have a PC to play the game yet, so once he was able to actually play, he hit the ground running. He started playing normal games with his average group until he hit about level 30 where he first heard about Ranked. He grinded in Season 5, working his hardest to land in his first division, Bronze 5. But he was proud of that Bronze 5. He didn't know at this point that that was the worst division you could get. And even back then, he was still playing off-meta picks like Volibear Mid or Thresh Top or even Annie ADC. In Season 6, he started to improve his knowledge of the game, watching YouTube videos. See, like this channel, you can help you climb too, just keep watching, guys. And within a month of taking all his newfound information in, he pushed himself to Gold 1. At this point, all he wanted to do was climb higher and higher, he was hooked. He didn't even want to play with his friends anymore. I mean, we've all been there, right? Oof, to be young. He finally find his first main role in ADC in Season 7, and he was able to push himself into Diamond for the first time. And through Seasons 8 and 9, he reached Master with a 65% win rate, playing with champions like Kai'Sa and Evelyn against some big-name streamers. He kept pushing, and by Season 10, the highest rank he made it to was Grand Master, maining ADC. And since he loved AD Carry so much, he started trying out Kale in roles like Top and Mid, since she functions pretty similarly in her playstyle. He played her on a few of his accounts, playing over 100 games in two weeks, and just recently discovered her potential as a support as well. On the account we're analyzing today, he's played over 140 games as Kale, with a 57% win rate, to Master Tier, where he's still trying to climb to Challenger with off-meta picks, to this day. Support Kale has some pretty large weaknesses we need to talk about first, though. For one, I'm, I mean, you're Kale. You're a champion that is meant to scale, and being in the support role hinders your leveling and income, making you get to that late game fantasy much later. Also, she lacks hard CC, only offering a slow within her kit. Additionally, she's squishy and vulnerable to all in champions, so you always need to be careful with her. And finally, and most importantly, if you're just not into leafy greens, she's probably not the champion for you. But, even with all of these potential problems, Kron has found a way to make it work. Alright, here's, here's the deal guys. Normally we go through level by level on how a support is played, but I just want to cut right to the chase. With Kale's support, you have one goal in mind. Chill the hell out and capitalize on ganks or your opponent's mistakes. You really don't have any fighting power early game or before your ultimate, so most of the lane boils down to your ADC farming up and maybe you tossing in a Q every now and then, but mostly using your mana to just heal both of you. It's not sexy, it's not exciting, and it's pretty low skill cap early game. But the simplicity is beautiful. You don't have to look up matchup information or know what you're really strong against. You need to sit back, take as little damage as you can, and let your ADC farm up. If the lane goes completely even until you're level 6, your ultimate and your ranged attacks finally give you the ability to take all kinds of fights with your teammates. This next part comes from Kron himself. You have to think of Kale as a better version of Soraka. So why is it that Kron believes that Kale can function as a more effective Soraka? Well, now let's talk about Kale's abilities. Kron maxes W, or Celestial Blessing, first. This ability heals both your chosen target and yourself for a pretty great amount. If we were to compare this to Soraka's heal, it has a higher overall base healing and 10% less AP ratio without any health cost. It also buffs you and your allies' movement, and since positioning is so important on both Kale and ADCs, this means an easier time kiting and moving around for both of you. It also means that your team has a much better chase ability as well, and with Season 11 being so much about fighting around the map and in jungle, this can help you out a lot. He maxes Q second, or Radiant Blast. You can use this ability in two ways, either to once again make chasing an enemy down even easier with its up to 50% slow at max level, 
or as another way to peel for important carries on your team. Radiant Blast also shreds armor and magic resist of the opponent by 15%, so while they slowly try to catch up to your movement speed enhanced carry, you and your team have the potential to burst them down. E or Starfire Spellblade is the last to be maxed. While Kale in another lane would want to max this first, it's not as valuable as Kale support because your goal isn't to do damage, it's to peel for your carries and keep your team sustained in long fights. He'll throw in an E for some extra damage when an enemy is low, or if he lands a Q, but unless the game goes super late and he's able to enable all levels of his passive, that's really it. Using Kale's ultimate, or Divine Judgment, is where the game really gets fun. It's all about timing here, so knowing when the enemy team is going to try and unload on your carry is normally the best time to use it. But just saving someone's life is enough as well sometimes. Another good time to use Kale ultimate, Kron mentioned, is on your frontline engagers. Divine Judgment also does solid base damage when the swords come crashing into the ground once it's over, so if you have someone on your team diving into the middle of the enemy team, and your ultimate is able to mitigate a bunch of damage for them when they jump in, and get maximum value from the damage it provides as well, this normally means a one team fight. When we get to mid game as Kale, you want to follow the buddy system. You're not great at ganking or looking for fights by yourself, so hold hands with your carries and fulfill your main job of peeling for them and healing them up. Your presence in a big scrap is important, so keep your eyes on the minimap for nearby fights that you can turn the tides of in with your peeling, heals, and ultimate. When you're team fighting as Kale, you want to follow these rules as well. Tag along with your strongest ally and peel for them as much as possible. Play keep away with the enemy team and try to save your ultimate when you think the majority of the burst damage is going to hit them. You want to be careful not to waste your ultimate on someone who isn't far ahead on your team. Your top lane who is 0-8 is about to die? Probably let them go and save your ultimate for your 9-1 mid lane Silas who is about to go all in. If you see a team fight is just about to break out and a bruiser or tank is rushing in without their team, slow them with your Q and shred their armor and magic resist. If your team can unload on them quick enough before the rest of the enemy team follows up, this normally means you can turn it into a 4v5 pretty quickly without that beefy boy in the way. Regardless of the team fight's tempo, your positioning is so important for Kale because of her squishiness, so play front to back or buy your tanks and stay alive for as long as possible. It's way more valuable for you to use your ult on a teammate than yourself, and you don't want it to have to come to that. Some quick tips and tricks I just picked up while watching a bunch of Kron's games. Number one, earlier we talked about how Kale's E is largely forgotten on her as a support, and Kron uses it when someone is low health. That's because it's an execute, and does more damage when your opponent is at lower health. So even though it's less important on Kale's support, don't forget about this ability altogether. Another great tip I noticed while watching him play is a great signifier for using your ultimate is when somebody is fully committed. And when I say fully committed, I like I mean using their only gap close ability like let's say Kha'Zix jumping in, or even if it's your own team like that clip we saw earlier of Silas jumping in. If you know, okay, they're fully in, they're going all in, that's a great time to say, okay, I should also use my ultimate. And also in the realm of ultimate tips is the fact that you are completely locked out of using any of your other abilities or auto attacking when your ultimate's invulnerability is active. That's why it's so important to use it on an ally rather than yourself also, so they can keep moving and attacking while they're unkillable. For his build, he starts every game with either a Spell Thief's Edge against melee supports or a Relic Shield against range supports, since it's so much easier to farm against them with Relic Shield. From there, he builds Boots and starts to rush his Mythic item, almost always getting an Imperial Mandate against teams that are less mobile. He also mentioned that Moonstone could be good against teams with a lot of poke, or Shirelius can be viable against more slippery teams, but he opts for Imperial Mandate most of the time. He'll then finish his boots, always getting boots of lucidity for more ability haste. For his fourth item, he states that Staff of Flowing Water is also core on Kale support thanks to the movement speed it provides both you and your ally that synergizes with your W. For his fifth item, he suggests looking to what is useful in the game, but sticking to the items that build out of Forbidden Idol. Building Ardent Sensor if you have a strong auto attacker, Mikhail's if the enemy has a strong CC ability, or Redemption if you need more healing. And honestly, he noted even a Rylize could go in this slot since it synergizes pretty well with her. 
If the game goes long or he needs some more oomph in his build, he'll build an elixir of sorcery. And for his sixth item, and throughout the whole game as a good support does, he's buying control wards to win the vision game, and potentially building a ward stone if the game goes very late. For his runes, he takes Summon Airy for synergy with his W and Poking, Mana Flow Man to help with Sustain, Transcendence for more Ability Haste, and Gathering Storm for more AP. He also brings Ghost Poro for more AP Scaling and Vision Control, and Ultimate Hunter since Divine Judgment is Kale's most game-changing ability. For his Flex runes, he brings 2 Adaptive Force and HP per level to help with Squishiness. He takes MR or Armor instead if the enemy team is stacked with AD or AP champs. Support Kale works well with most ADCs, but particularly well with ADCs who want to go in like Samira or Tristana, or low mobility ADCs like Twitch or Jin. Support Kale struggles against aggressive early game carries like Draven and Caitlyn, and supports with hard engage or hooks like Alistar and Blitzcrank. Support Kale when I saw it in Master Tier in EUNE is nothing like my brain envisioned it to be. I really assumed it was going to be this uh, carry that eventually is going to slowly build up into the late game, but what I found is that it's really more akin to an enchanter or peel support, which is super crazy. I am going to try this live in my streams upcoming. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so come check me out if you guys have some time then. I would love to see you on Twitch.tv with me. If you guys are unable to make that, I would love for you instead to like and subscribe if you could. It helps me and the video so much more than you guys can imagine, and I appreciate any time we get a comment down there. I try my best to respond to all of you and at least heart all of those, so please pop in there for a little conversation. Um, that's really it for today, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in and staying this late into the video if you have, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day or night or morning or whatever it is for y'all. Peace.